Ancient Evidence Now that you know how Nibiru spins the Earth around every 3,600 years, here is some of the more fun supporting evidence. Let's look at whales and woolly mammoths, rapid climate change, and abandoned cities. Have any of you heard of the Charlotte Whale? The Vermont State Fossil, it is a whale skeleton found in a field in 1849, 200 miles from the ocean, at an elevation of 340 feet. So a, a big whale skeleton up in the hills. The bones were carbon dated to 10,500 years ago. And a note, quick side note about carbon dating. Carbon dating, they can only go back about 55,000 years. Beyond that, they, they just have to guess how old something was. And even then, there's a tolerance, a margin of error of a few hundred years. So I give dates that are published in articles that will that will be plus or minus a few hundred years from our pole shift date, but they're, they're all talking about the pole shift. So what happened at that time, 10,500 years ago? There was a pole shift and great flooding. Remember that the oceans slosh back and forth for days after a pole shift. The floodwaters washed the whale 200 miles inland and left him there. Whales are mammals and have heavy bones like humans. Since whale bones are so large, they weren't dragged away by scavengers like coyotes and vultures. On a side note, every culture on the planet has its own flood myth, from the Chinese to the Indians to the Hawaiians and the Incas. While every pole shift ca causes great flooding, some kind of super flood happened three pole shifts ago that gave rise to the legends of Noah and Gilgamesh. We can only speculate what might have caused the super flood. Maybe an extra large ice cap crashed and fell into the ocean or something. Are whale bones found in other weird places around the world? Yes, they are. In Ontario, Canada, whale bones were found, again dated to 11,000 years ago, and far from any ocean. Whale skeletons have been found in the Egyptian desert and on high dry land in Chile. Whales weren't the only ones affected by the pole shift 10,500 years ago. That was three pole shifts ago. Did you know that North America once had as many wild animals as Africa does today? Camels, lions, tigers, elephants, and zebras roamed from the valleys of California to the plains of the Midwest. Then, about 11,000 years ago, they mostly died out. Researchers used to blame the Indians for hunting them to extinction, but recent, recent studies have shown that sudden climate change was to blame, as their lush jungles and savannas turned to tundra. So, three pole shifts ago, the North Pole moved from Siberia to over Alaska, all within the space of a couple hours, much of North America went from an equatorial climate to a much drier, harsher environment. Let's look a little closer at the phenomena of woolly mammoth graveyards. Woolly mammoth graveyards are a smoking gun for the science of the pole shift. Large herds of dead woolly mammoths are found all over the globe, from Serbia to South Dakota to Siberia. In Siberia, they pull intact corpses out of the permafrost, with skin and hair still intact, some still with blood in their veins. These mammoths show signs of drowning, with mud packed in their throats and food still in their stomachs. The only way to preserve bodies this well is through flash freezing, the equivalent of throwing the body into a deep freezer. But how could this occur naturally? A woolly mammoth is just a long-haired elephant, same size, same lifestyle, and although we find woolly mammoth graveyards in places that today are barren tundra, the National Elephant Center tells us that elephants prefer savanna and rainforest to live in, where they can find the 200 to 600 pounds of food a day that is consumed by one adult elephant. Elephants are vegetarians and eat tree branches, bark, twigs, bushes, and grass, and they drink 50 gallons of water a day. In the popular conception, because we find dead mammoths in tundra today, we assume that they lived on the tundra, as these modern illustrations show. But a mammoth is just a hairy elephant, and elephants need jungles and savanna to survive. Where is the food for a herd of elephants on this tundra up here? Do you see any trees, any branches, any bushes taller than your knee? How can a tundra support herds of hundreds of elephants? Woolly mammoths would starve to death quickly on a tundra.
Woolly mammoths lived in savannas and forests, just as modern elephants do. During past pole shifts, a hapless herd of mammoths would suddenly find its habitat whipped up into the polar region, first flooding, then flash freezing them all in place. Because the average temperature at the North Pole is minus 40 degrees. After thousands of years, another pole shift would move that mammoth graveyard back south to a warmer climate where they could be discovered by mankind. Let's leave our woolly mammoth friends for a moment and look more closely at the Earth itself. Not only does the planet get reoriented during the hour of the pole shift, but the tectonic plates shift up and down as well. Some plates rise, some plates sink. One thing researchers have noticed is that the shores of the Atlantic get dragged down with every pole shift. We find proof of this last fact in Doggerland a large swath of Europe that used to sit above the waves but sank down with each pole shift. Scientists were first tipped off to the existence of Doggerland when Dutch fishermen would pull mammoth bones up in their fishing nets along with handmade fish hooks and axe heads. These were signs of human habitation. But on the floor of the North Sea, which is just north of uh, the Netherlands, out in the ocean. You can see on this map the lighter green land used to be above water. Then around 11,000 years ago it sank leaving the medium green land which in turn sank a few thousand years later until you have the pink land left today. So with each pole shift every 3600 years the tectonic plate that Europe sits on gets pulled out and down towards the Atlantic Ocean. This is a regular occurrence. We find evidence of Doggerland in the ancient Welsh forests, located underwater just off the shore of western England. You see how the land gets pulled underwater with each pole shift. These trees have been carbon dated to the time prior to the last pole shift 4,000 years ago. Where else can we find signs of human habitation that sank beneath the waves during a past pole shift? Off one of Japan's southern islands lies the Yonaguni Monument, remains of an ancient city that were discovered by a Japanese scuba diver in 1987. The massive structure contains hallways, stairs, doorways, and carvings of a whale. Researchers estimate the age at over 9,000 years old. So when Yonaguni was built, it had to be on dry land, but since then, Pole shifts either raised the sea level or sank the tectonic plate, or possibly a bit of both. And now Yonaguni sits underwater. We find these sunken cities all over the planet. In 2002, off the coast of India, an oceanographic expedition found the remains of a vast city 120 feet underwater. Huge stone foundations, pottery, human bone were found carbon dated to over 9,500 years ago. We know that the Indian subcontinent sinks significantly during every pole shift. Down in the Baltic Sea, divers discovered an 11,000 year old human settlement 52 feet underwater off the coast of Sweden, finding a harpoon, hand tools, and cattle bones. And in the Black Sea, marine archaeologists found stone tools and the wooden beams of houses 300 feet down and 12 miles off the coast, showing that there was dry land at that spot 7,500 years ago. This is all pole shift related. Let's check in with our pole shift timeline and see where these all fit. 10,750 years ago, the pole shift caused the sea levels to rise. 7,500 years ago, 7,300 years ago, uh, the Black Sea flooded. So if pole shift science is accurate, any place on Earth could have been one of the poles at some point, right? And Antarctica, for example, might have been up on the equator and been a jungle at one time. So does that mean we can find, say, oh, I don't know, palm trees under the ice of Antarctica? Yes, we can, and we have. Antarctica wasn't always the South Pole. I mean, think about it. If you could grow palm trees, under the ice cap of Antarctica, that means, you know, if it's warm enough for palm trees at the South Pole, that means it's going to be like 200 degrees 
uh, Fahrenheit at the equator. It would kill everything alive at the equator. And there's as absolutely zero evidence of this. The South Pole gets two months of darkness in the winter. How are you going to support a jungle with two months of darkness in the winter? Obviously, Antarctica was not always at the South Pole. They gloss over this in, in science class and in, in, in um, other research studies. But you have to have a good explanation for it. And the pole shift science explains it all. They, they talk about ice ages. Guys, there was, there was no such thing as an ice age. Remember, carbon dating only goes back 55,000 years. All right, Beyond that, they're just guessing. They think ice ages lasted for hundreds of thousands of years or something. They have no idea. All they're doing is they're seeing parts of land that used to be under an ice cap. And it changes every 3,600 years. It changes so frequently that they don't, the researchers, they don't know any better. They see all this land that used to be under ice and they figure, well, it was just all under ice at the same time. Wrong. And if the science of the pole shift is accurate, climate change happened very rapidly in the past. The Sahara Desert was once lush and populated. Climate change about 10,500 years ago turned the desert into a savanna. There it is in a scientific article. And then, very rapidly, about 8,000 years ago, something strange happened. The area turned from a savanna back into a desert. So researchers here are confirming that at about the time of two pole shifts ago, the climate change completely in the Sahara. Checking in with our pole shift timeline, we see that three pole shifts ago, the Sahara Desert turned from a desert into a savanna, and then about 7,300 years ago, the new weather patterns caused the Sahara to turn back into a desert, which we still have to this day. When the Earth gets new poles and a new equator, it also gets a different jet stream with different monsoon and hurricane seasons in different places. One last note about woolly mammoths to bring us to the most recent pole shift that happened 3,600 years ago. Today, Wrangell Island is an isolated scrap of tundra in the Arctic Ocean, but researchers have found woolly mammoth remains from just 3,600 years ago on this island, and they think that these were the last woolly mammoths to have ever lived. Scientists today scratch their heads, wondering why mammoths survived on this island for over 6,000 years, then suddenly died off all at once, right around 3,600 years ago. Quote, we wanted to find out why they became extinct. We rejected the inbreeding theory. They were isolated for 6,000 years, but maintained a stable population. What possibly could have driven them to extinction right around 3,600 years ago? asks the scientist of today, totally clueless about pole shift science. Well, that was the time of the most recent pole shift, where Wrangell Island was whipped from a temperate zone full of trees and grass up into the Arctic Circle, where it resides today, covered in tundra. So of course all the mammoths on the island died out at that time. Their environment shriveled up and froze. Their food all died. Elephants cannot survive on tundra. See how Wrangell Island moved from a temperate zone full of grass and trees to the Arctic Circle. And here is what Wrangell Island looks like today. Barren tundra. Since we are talking now about the most recent pole shift 3,600 years ago, what other evidence can we find? 3,600 years ago was roughly 1,600 BC. That was the end of the Bronze Age, when mankind started using iron and steel for his weapons and tools. And evidence shows that the Bronze Age ended in a massive collapse of every major civilization in the Mediterranean. In fact, historians call it the Late Bronze Age Collapse. The Mycenaean Kingdom, the Hittite Empire, the Egyptian dynasties all collapsed with trade routes disrupted, cities destroyed, and literacy extinguished for hundreds of years. And when the records pick back up again, historians assume that they, they started right after they ended, but it didn't. There's a couple hundred years lapse in there. Every major city at that time, from Troy to Gaza, shows a destruction layer in the archaeology, with populations reduced, people turned to hunter-gatherer lifestyles, and record-keeping halted, like I mentioned. Every, eventually, certain cultures recovered, such as the Egyptians and Assyrians, and they carried on into the Iron Age. As one researcher notes, 
My main thesis is that there must have been a perfect storm of calamitous events in order to cause the late Bronze Age collapse. This is the researcher talking. There was climate change, drought, famine, earthquakes, invasions, rebellions, all at the same time. So yeah, this, this researcher, he's basically describing exactly what happens in the lead up to a pole shift. He just didn't understand the details of Nibiru uh, the way we do. And you hear about these big volcanic eruptions. They like to pin the collapse of civilization on just one volcanic eruption, like Thera, or the volcano Hecla in Iceland, or uh, Santorini. Um, or they talk about the Storega slides. These are all attempts to explain the changing face of Europe from these cyclical pole shifts. All those volcanoes, they erupted all at the same time during the last pole shift. It's just the carbon dating they have, it's got a big margin of error. So as we now know, when Nibiru enters our solar system, you have 20 years of increasingly weird events. You get strange weather, you get earthquakes, you get social unrest. That leads to crop shortages and collapsed structures. Then when the pole shift finally happens, massive flooding and sudden drastic climate change lead to total societal breakdown. And that's what caused the Great Bronze Age collapse. Not knowing, and the people, if they don't know if all these changes happen just in their little village or and so, so they tend to migrate out and look for greener pastures and other places to live and cities that were once heavily populated become deserted so do we find evidence of deserted cities and other cultures besides the mediterranean yes we do near india we find huge advanced cities at mohenjo daro and harappa in the indus valley that existed for a thousand years and then were suddenly abandoned right around 1600 BC. And we learned from a study published in 2012 that natural climate change wiped the Harappan civilization off the map. The Harappan people fled their cities in response to a climate change cycle of declining monsoon rains that stopped feeding rivers. So basically, when the last pole shift happened, the lush, fertile river valley turned into the desert that it still is today. People had to leave Mahendradaro. So did any civilization leave written records of the strangeness that accompanied the last pole shift? Yes, several did. The Jia dynasty, one of China's earliest kingdoms, collapsed suddenly right around, you guessed it, 1600 BC. The Chinese are known for their good record keeping, and records from this time come to us from the bamboo annals, describing odd weather and the earth wobble, followed by massive flooding of the Yellow River. Quote, in the 29th year, the sun was dimmed and distressed. Ice formed in the summer mornings and frosts in the sixth month, July. Heavy rainfall toppled temples and buildings. Heaven gave severe orders. The sun and moon were untimely. Hot and cold weather arrived in disorder. The five cereal crops withered and died. So they are describing the blending of the seasons that accompanies an extreme earth wobble right before the passage of Nibiru. Shortly after this, the kingdom collapsed as starvation and climate change led to migration and breaking down of the political order. Checking in with our pole shift timeline. We see how the North Pole moved from over North America to over the Arctic Sea about 3,600 years ago. This would have changed the jet stream, the westerly winds, changed the monsoon and hurricane patterns, drying up some rivers and creating new ones. Pole shifts and the climate change that come with them have led to the abandonment of cities found all over the world, such as Tikal in Guatemala, Mesa Verde in Colorado, La Ciudad Perdida in Colombia, Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, Scarabre in Scotland, Pumapunku in Bolivia, and many others. If you have the time and the interest, look up any of the cities I just mentioned, read their stories and the theories. You'll find that it all dovetails very nicely with the pole shift science. 